daring to imagine what dangers might prowl or crawl beneath me, and sleepless for thinking how I might survive the next day without food or weapons or human company. Imagine finding yourself marooned on a deserted island, your world suddenly collapsing around you. How would you handle the isolation, the uncertainty, and the daunting task of survival? Step into the shoes of Alexander Selkirk, a Scottish privateer whose true story inspired Robinson Crusoe. During a routine ship resupply, Selkirk faced a pivotal decision, repair the leaking vessel or risk sailing on. When his plea for repairs was ignored, he bravely chose to stay behind, alone on the island. For 52 months, he battled isolation and uncertainty, his survival hanging by a thread. Join us on this journey through Selkirk's incredible tale of endurance against all odds. Early Life Before Alexander Selkirk rose to prominence as the legendary survivor of later years, the seeds of his adventurous spirit were sown in his upbringing in Lower Largo, Fife, Scotland. Born in 1676 as the seventh son of a tanner, Selkirk's childhood was steeped in the mystique of Scottish folklore with his mother believing him to possess extraordinary abilities. While he was introduced early to the family trade of shoemaking, his penchant for mischief often led him astray from the traditional path. By the time he reached 17, Selkirk had already found himself in trouble on multiple occasions, including an infamous incident involving disruptive behavior in a local church that caught the attention of authorities. However, it was a seemingly minor incident that almost had dire consequences when he impulsively endangered his younger brother during a fit of rage induced by consuming salt water. This impulsive act, characteristic of Selkirk's unpredictable nature, narrowly avoided legal repercussions. Instead of conforming to societal expectations by joining the Navy or continuing in the family trade, Alexander chose a more daring route. He set his sights on the world of pirates and privateers, flourishing in the South Seas during the late 17th and early 18th centuries. Privateering, sanctioned by governments through letters of mark, authorized private ship owners to act as quasi-naval forces, disrupting enemy trade routes and capturing rival vessels to weaken adversaries. During England's conflict with Spain in 1703, the British Navy commissioned ships to disrupt Spanish operations, marking the pinnacle of piracy's golden age. While these ventures promised considerable rewards, they also carried substantial risks. Over time, Alexander became increasingly involved in expeditions, eventually assuming the role of navigator. His endeavors primarily targeted Spanish forces in South America, playing a significant role in the ongoing naval conflict in the region. Selkirk's formative years in Scotland only hinted at the depths of his adventurous nature. It was his bold decision to embrace the life of a privateer that truly set the stage for the remarkable journey that lay ahead. His exploits in the South Seas would soon propel him into notoriety as a skilled navigator and fearless explorer, laying the foundation for his eventual rise to fame as the revered survivor we know today. Expanding upon Selkirk's early life and his transition to a privateer, we can delve deeper into the cultural and historical context of Scotland in the late 17th century. Fife, known for its rich folklore and superstitions, provided a fertile ground for the development of Selkirk's unconventional beliefs and aspirations. His upbringing within a family trade added layers to his character, highlighting his initial ties to a conventional livelihood before he embarked on his daring endeavors. Furthermore, exploring the dynamics of privateering during the golden age of piracy offers insight into the socio-political climate of the time. The conflicts between European powers, such as England and Spain, fueled the demand for privateers to disrupt enemy operations. This context underscores the significance of Selkirk's role as a navigator and his contributions to the maritime struggles of the era. By expanding upon these elements, Selkirk's journey emerges as a multifaceted tale of individual ambition intersecting with historical forces. It not only enriches our understanding of his character, but also provides a broader narrative of adventure and exploration in the tumultuous seas of the late 17th and early 18th centuries. The fateful journey that later turned into an ordeal. 
As Alexander's maritime journey unfolded aboard the Sink ports, a vessel under the command of Captain William Dampier, little did he anticipate the dramatic turn it would take. With Captain Dampier succumbing to scurvy, Lieutenant Thomas Stradling assumed leadership, sparking a tumultuous era aboard the ship. The constant clashes between Captain William and Lieutenant Thomas fueled tensions among the crew, teetering on the edge of mutiny and casting a shadow over their already precarious voyage. Despite the internal strife, they endured a challenging year marked by failed attempts to capture a French warship and the unwelcome attention of enemy navies. In the fateful year of 1704, a heated dispute over the handling of a captured vessel drove a rift between the two captains, leading to their decision to part ways. Alexander, recognizing Lieutenant Thomas as the more capable leader, chose to remain under his command. However, their collaboration soon soured as clashes between Alexander and Captain Stradling intensified, driven by the latter's youthful arrogance. Despite their discord, they persisted in their maritime endeavors, successfully engaging enemy vessels. Yet, the relentless demands of their pursuits eventually took a toll on their ship, compelling them to seek refuge and undertake repairs at a nearby island. Arriving at the Juan Fernandez Islands, located approximately 400 miles west of Chile, Alexander and Captain Stradling found themselves at odds regarding their next course of action. While Captain Stradling advocated for immediate departure, fearing unseen adversaries lying in wait, Alexander stressed the importance of thorough repairs to ensure the ship's seaworthiness. Despite the absence of visible threats on the island, Captain Stradling's concerns about potential ambushes fueled his urgency to set sail. In contrast, Alexander urged caution, fully aware of the perils of navigating with a compromised vessel. In a moment of critical decision-making, Alexander made the bold choice to remain on the main island of the Juan Fernandez archipelago, Massa Tierra. He endeavored to persuade his fellow crew members of the dangers posed by sailing on a ship in need of repairs, emphasizing the risks of embarking on a premature voyage. As he stood firm in his conviction, Alexander demonstrated his leadership and foresight, setting the stage for the challenging yet ultimately transformative chapter that lay ahead in his maritime exploits. Facing the Ordeal In the face of uncertainty regarding the arrival of another ship and the perceived risks of remaining stranded on the island, none of Alexander's fellow crew members opted to join him in his solitary decision. Realizing he would be alone, Alexander reconsidered his stance and expressed a desire to rejoin the crew. Despite his initial resolve, the daunting prospect of isolation weighed heavily on him, prompting a change of heart as he contemplated the challenges of surviving alone on the island. As Alexander watched the ship sail away, Captain Stradling's threatening gesture with the gun left him marooned on the island, armed only with a few essential items for survival, a Bible, a hatchet, a musket, some provisions, and clothing. Despite these supplies, the reality of being stranded proved to be an immense challenge. Initially, he clung to the hope that Captain Stradling would reconsider and return to rescue him. However, as days turned into weeks, that hope gradually dwindled. Faced with hunger and exhaustion, Alexander struggled to adapt to his solitary existence. Days were spent gazing out at the sea, yearning for rescue, while nights brought the cold embrace of loneliness. To stave off starvation, he turned to the shoreline for sustenance, relying on shellfish and scavenging for fish as his daily sustenance. Yet the weight of solitude bore down heavily upon his spirit, with each passing day amplifying the ache for human connection. As seasons changed and flowers bloomed around him, Alexander grappled with the harsh reality of his isolation. Accustomed to the camaraderie of his large family and fellow sailors, he now found himself alone in a desolate landscape. The initial months tested his resilience, with moments of despair threatening to overwhelm him. However, his unwavering faith, deeply rooted in his upbringing within the church, became his steadfast anchor amidst the tempest of isolation, offering solace and strength during the darkest hours. Refocusing his perspective, Alexander began to see himself not as abandoned in a barren wasteland, but rather as provided for by a benevolent god on an island abundant in resources. Drawing upon his resourcefulness, 
he managed to eke out an existence for approximately nine months. Initially surviving on a diet of seafood and seals found along the beach, he encountered new challenges as the seasons shifted, testing his ingenuity and perseverance in the face of adversity. As fall descended upon the island, Alexander faced a new challenge as the beach transformed into a perilous mating ground for sea lions. Forced to seek refuge inland to avoid the territorial clashes of these formidable creatures, he embarked on a journey into the heart of the island's interior. With winter looming and temperatures plummeting, the urgency of finding adequate shelter became paramount. Venturing into the forest for the first time, Alexander's eyes widened with wonder at the lush vegetation surrounding him. Amidst the towering pimento trees, he found inspiration and opportunity. Skillfully wielding his hatchet, he set to work crafting a shelter that would withstand the harsh elements. Using sturdy branches and foliage, he erected a rudimentary hut, its walls offering protection against the biting winds of winter. Gathering tall grass from the hillsides, Alexander meticulously thatched the roof of his makeshift abode, ensuring an additional layer of insulation against the cold. With each carefully woven strand, the hut took shape, evolving into a sanctuary amidst the unforgiving wilderness. Inside, he fashioned a bed from sturdy pimento branches, layering it with soft bedding crafted from the island's natural resources. As he lay beneath the shelter of his newly constructed hut, Alexander felt a sense of pride and accomplishment wash over him. Despite the challenges and adversities he had faced, he had managed to create a semblance of home in the midst of isolation. With the warmth of the fire crackling nearby and the soothing rustle of the wind through the thatched roof, he found solace and comfort amidst the harsh conditions of the desolate island. Despite the island's idyllic subtropical Mediterranean climate, with temperatures typically hovering between a comfortable 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit year-round, Alexander Selkirk faced ongoing challenges that tested his resilience and ingenuity. One such formidable obstacle was the absence of refrigeration facilities, rendering it impossible for him to preserve hunted meat for extended periods. This unfortunate circumstance attracted a relentless swarm of rats drawn by the scent of food and threatening to deplete his precious provisions. Despite his best efforts to thwart them, the tenacious pests persisted, posing a persistent threat to Alexander's survival. Amidst the adversity, a stroke of brilliance illuminated Alexander's mind, inspiring him to devise a cunning solution to his rat infestation predicament. Realizing that the rodents were not native to the island, but had arrived as stowaways on passing ships, he drew upon historical knowledge to formulate a timeless remedy. Cats. Fortunately, the island was populated by feral felines, also brought ashore by unwitting sailors. Displaying his trademark resourcefulness, Alexander sought out some kittens and took on the role of their caretaker, raising them himself. These newfound feline companions swiftly became Alexander's nocturnal guardians, tirelessly patrolling the perimeter of his shelter and keeping the rat population in check. Sacrificing a portion of his precious meat provisions to sustain his feline protectors proved to be a small price to pay for the invaluable peace of mind they provided. As his feline family expanded, so did his sense of companionship, and Alexander found solace in their presence, finally able to rest more soundly at night, knowing that his food supply was safeguarded. With his nights now guarded by his vigilant feline allies, Alexander turned his attention to further enhancing his living conditions on the desolate island. Determined to create a more efficient cooking space, he embarked on the construction of a second hut, designating it as his kitchen. Using fire-resistant wood, he skillfully fashioned a spit for roasting the animals he hunted. Drawing upon his childhood knowledge and survival skills, he employed the ancient technique of friction fire to ignite flames. By vigorously rubbing one stick against another, he generated enough heat to produce vital embers. Placing these glowing embers atop a carefully arranged bed of dry, flammable materials, such as leaves or twigs, Alexander created a reliable source of warmth and a means to cook his food in the absence of modern conveniences. His resourcefulness in mastering these essential survival techniques proved crucial in confronting the daunting challenges of isolation. 
Among his indispensable tools was his trusty kettle, which facilitated the boiling of meat and simplified the butchering process, ensuring his continued sustenance on the uninhabited island. Despite the challenges of his island exile, Alexander's resourcefulness and determination only seemed to grow with time. Buoyed by his success with the feral cats, he expanded his efforts and embarked on the ambitious task of taming the wild goats that roamed the island. Recognizing their potential as a sustainable source of food, he kept them close for milk and meat, supplementing his diet with their offerings. However, his primary sustenance still came from hunting wild goats on foot, a skill he honed through practice and perseverance. Surprisingly, the island's bounty extended beyond just animals. Alexander discovered a plethora of vegetables, including pimento peppers, parsnips, radishes, watercress, and various native fruits. His resourcefulness knew no bounds as he even stumbled upon a cabbage palm, which he ingeniously utilized to bake bread. Occasionally treating himself to a feast of large crayfish boiled alongside the vegetables he foraged, Alexander found ways to thrive amidst the island's natural abundance. As the days turned into months and then years, Alexander settled into a rhythm of island life, relishing the diverse diet and engaging in activities that stimulated his mind and body alike. His intimate knowledge of the terrain allowed him to navigate with ease, while his hunting expeditions served as both physical exercise and a means of sustenance. With each successful hunt, his agility and strength improved, enabling him to pursue larger prey and further bolstering his survival skills. However, amidst his newfound confidence, Alexander's brush with mortality served as a stark reminder of the dangers that lurked in his isolated domain. In a moment of overconfidence, he attempted to scale a cliff in pursuit of a large adult goat, only to lose his footing and tumble backward. The impact left him bruised and gasping for breath, immobilized for days with likely cracked ribs. In an unexpected twist of fate, the very goat he sought to capture inadvertently cushioned his fall, ultimately playing a role in saving his life. Despite this near-fatal setback, Alexander's resilience remained unshaken. He emerged from the ordeal with a renewed sense of caution, a reminder that even in the midst of triumph, humility and vigilance were essential companions in the unforgiving wilderness of his island home. Alexander Selkirk's miraculous recovery from his fall was indeed a stroke of luck, sparing him from potential complications such as infections or respiratory issues. Yet, the specter of what could have been lingered in his thoughts, reminding him of the fragility of his existence on the unforgiving island. The possibility of enduring lingering pain, stiffness or deformities in his ribcage loomed as a grim reminder of his vulnerability amidst the rugged landscape. Contemplating the harsh reality of his mortality, Alexander grappled with the sobering notion of his potential demise and the erasure of his existence. Fearing he might become prey to the island's creatures, including his loyal feline companions, he took preemptive measures to mark his presence. Carving his name and the date of his stranding onto trees, he fashioned makeshift tombstones as somber reminders of his transient existence in the vast expanse of the wilderness. The relentless passage of time took its toll on Alexander's belongings, gradually wearing out his clothes and bedding. Undeterred, he turned to his resourcefulness and the companionship of his goat allies. Drawing upon his skills as a tanner, he fashioned new garments from goat pelts and leather strips salvaged from his navigation kit. His ingenuity knew no bounds as he repurposed unexpected finds on the beach, transforming two large metal hoops into makeshift knives to aid in his daily tasks. Despite finding a semblance of contentment in his solitary existence, Alexander wrestled with the gnawing ache of loneliness and the yearning for human companionship. Each day, he scanned the horizon with hopeful anticipation, searching for any sign of distant ships that might offer him the chance of rescue. Encouragement came in the form of remnants left behind by previous visitors to the island. Broken barrels, torn bushes, and the presence of feral goats likely left behind by others. These signs fueled his optimism, reinforcing his steadfast belief that one day, a passing ship would appear on the horizon, offering him the lifeline he desperately sought. Close Encounter with the Spanish 
Several years into his solitary exile, Alexander's vigilance was finally rewarded when a ship dropped anchor near the island's shore. Thrilled beyond measure, he dashed to the beach, frantically waving two large leaves in a desperate bid to attract their attention. However, in his eagerness to make contact, he overlooked a critical detail. Failing to discern the flags of the ships before revealing himself, a misstep that could potentially imperil his long-awaited rescue. As realization dawned upon Alexander that the approaching vessels bore Spanish flags, he swiftly retreated into the cover of tall grass, keenly observing their movements from a safe distance. With armed Spanish crew members scouring the island, he remained concealed, his heart pounding with trepidation as shots rang out sporadically, echoing through the dense foliage as the search intensified. The tension mounted as the Spanish crew stumbled upon Alexander's modest hut, discovering his belongings, including his treasured Bible inscribed in English. Instantly recognizing him as a potential adversary, they redoubled their efforts, combing every inch of the island in pursuit of their elusive quarry. Hours dragged on as they methodically scoured the terrain, their frustration mounting with each passing moment. Yet, despite their relentless pursuit, the solitary figure of Alexander eluded their grasp, hidden amidst the labyrinthine landscape of the island. Eventually, faced with the harsh reality of their futile endeavor and the solitary nature of Alexander's presence, the Spanish crew reluctantly conceded defeat, begrudgingly abandoning their search. Returning to his humble abode after the Spanish ships vanished from sight, Alexander reflected upon the perilous encounter and the ever-looming threat of discovery. Determined to safeguard his newfound refuge, he resolved to remain vigilant and hide whenever unfamiliar ships approached, ensuring the preservation of his solitary existence amidst the untamed wilderness of the island. Rescue and return to civilization. Meanwhile, across the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean, back in England, four arduous years had elapsed since Alexander Selkirk's fateful marooning. For Captain William, the passage of time had brought its own trials and tribulations. Relegated to a new assignment following his notorious shortcomings, he found himself navigating the tumultuous seas as a pilot aboard the privateer vessel Duke, under the command of Captain Woods Rogers. In January of that pivotal year, as the Duke and its companion ship, the Duchess, approached the shores of Masatiera, memories of past events stirred within Captain William's mind. Struggling with dwindling supplies, the island presented itself as a beacon of hope, a potential haven to replenish their provisions. Yet, mindful of the events that had transpired four years prior, caution prevailed as they dropped anchor offshore, wary of potential risks lurking in the shadows of the island. Under the veil of night, a faint flicker of light dancing on the shore caught the crew's attention, shrouded in uncertainty amidst the darkness. With the break of dawn, the origin of the light became apparent, emanating from the island itself. A small contingent of the crew ventured ashore to investigate, their senses heightened by distant cries echoing through the air. Their arrival was met with a wild figure racing toward them, waving a small white flag in a frenzied display of desperation and hope. It was none other than Alexander Selkirk, who, upon spotting the English ships the day prior, had ignited a beacon of hope, kindling a fire to signal their approach. Throughout the long night, he tended to the flame with unwavering determination, preparing goats to welcome the weary crew upon their arrival. As the boats neared the shore at noon, Alexander's heart raced with anticipation as he dashed forward to embrace the crew, overwhelmed by a tumultuous mix of joy and disbelief. Years of solitude had taken their toll, leaving him grappling for words to articulate the depths of his emotions. Yet, despite the allure of rescue, Alexander's gaze lingered on Captain William, his memories of their past interactions mingling with the leadership displayed by the captain, casting a shadow of hesitation over his newfound sense of hope. It wasn't until the captain provided a detailed account of the events that had unfolded in England that Alexander finally acquiesced and agreed to come aboard the ship. Once esteemed as the finest crew member of the Cinque Ports by Captain William, Alexander quickly proved his worth during the following ten days, throwing himself into the task of assisting the crew in repairing and refitting their ships. 
With a deft hand, he hunted for fresh food, delaying the consumption of their remaining rations, and gratefully received new clothes and shoes, although the sensation of walking in shoes after years of barefoot existence initially proved cumbersome. As the sails billowed with wind and the ships set sail once more, Captain William observed with admiration the newfound skills and patience displayed by Alexander, honed during his solitary years on the island. Recognizing the remarkable transformation that had taken place, the captain made a decision that spoke volumes about Alexander's capabilities and resilience. He appointed him as the second mate, a position that even outranked William himself. This remarkable journey from marooned castaway to second mate marked the incredible conclusion of Alexander Selkirk's isolation on Masatiera. Following his remarkable rescue, Alexander seamlessly transitioned back into the world of privateering, rejoining the crew as if his time on Mesa Tierra had never occurred. Over the next four years, he sailed with the Duke, causing significant trouble for the Spanish along the way. His adventures on the high seas continued, a testament to the indomitable spirit and remarkable resilience of a man who had emerged from the depths of isolation to reclaim his place among the crew forever immortalized in the annals of maritime history. Finally, on October 1st, 1711, eight long years after being abandoned by Thomas Stradling, Alexander Selkirk set foot once again on English soil. His time aboard the Duke had proven fruitful, as he had managed to amass a considerable fortune of $800, a sum equivalent to several thousand dollars by today's standards. However, the fate of the original crew remained uncertain, their whereabouts and well-being lost to the annals of time. For Captain Thomas Stradling, the architect of Alexander's isolation, a harsher destiny awaited. His ship, later discovered off the coast of Peru, bore the unmistakable scars of neglect, confirming Alexander's concerns about its condition. Unable to repair the damages in time, the crew fell prey to the Spanish, captured and subjected to the brutal realities of imprisonment along the unforgiving Peruvian coastline. This turn of events served as a stark reminder of the consequences of their decisions and the perilous nature of life. Subsequently, Captain Stradling faced extradition to France for further sentencing, yet detailed records of his fate are scant, leaving his ultimate destiny veiled in uncertainty. Similarly, the fate of the remaining crew members remains obscured, their ultimate outcomes lost to the passage of time, their stories relegated to the realm of maritime lore and legend. Meanwhile, Captain William, once a respected figure among seafaring circles, faced a series of unfortunate events upon his return to England. Sued for damages to the St. George and the Sink ports, he found himself ensnared in a web of debt and disillusionment, his dreams of a prosperous future shattered. Despite evading the dire consequences that befell Thomas Stradling, William's spirit was irreparably broken, and he passed away in 1715, his aspirations of settling down and finding solace eluding him till the end. Upon his return to England, Alexander Selkirk found himself restless with the prospect of a settled life ashore. In 1717, he answered the call of the sea once more, this time joining the Royal Navy as an officer engaged in anti-piracy efforts. Yet tragedy would soon befall him while on patrol off the coast of Africa when he contracted yellow fever. On December 13, 1721, Alexander Selkirk breathed his last, his remarkable journey from marooned castaway to naval officer forever etched in the annals of history, his legacy a testament to the indomitable human spirit and the enduring allure of adventure on the high seas. The Legacy of a Castaway, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. Alexander Selkirk's extraordinary tale of survival on a desolate island not only serves as a compelling historical account, but also exerts a profound influence on popular culture. His story transcends mere documentation, leaving an indelible mark on literature and societal perceptions of solitude, resilience, and human endurance. One of the most significant manifestations of Selkirk's impact is evident in Daniel Defoe's seminal work, Robinson Crusoe, first published in 1719. Widely hailed as the first English novel, Robinson Crusoe bears striking resemblances to Selkirk's experiences. Defoe's narrative, though fictionalized, 
mirrors Selkirk's trials and triumphs as Crusoe grapples with the challenges of isolation and survival on an uninhabited island. Like Selkirk, Crusoe displays resourcefulness, fortitude, and introspection as he navigates his solitary existence, mastering survival skills, and building a life amidst the wilderness. Through Crusoe's adventures, Defoe explores the depths of the human spirit in adverse circumstances, drawing inspiration from Selkirk's real-life resilience and ingenuity. Selkirk's return to civilization ignited widespread curiosity and fascination. Accounts of his survival circulated widely, captivating the public imagination in early 18th century Britain. Selkirk attained a degree of celebrity status, with his story recounted in various publications and books. His first-hand narratives of survival were eagerly sought after, reflecting a broader societal fascination with exploration, adventure, and the exotic characteristic of an era marked by maritime exploration and colonial expansion. However, Selkirk's reintegration into society posed challenges. Despite his newfound fame, he struggled to readjust to the complexities and constraints of civilization. The solitude and simplicity of island life had profoundly impacted his psyche, rendering the transition back to society arduous. Reports suggest that Selkirk found it challenging to connect with others, including his own family, often expressing a yearning to return to the sea. This restlessness underscores the enduring effects of his isolation and the profound sense of belonging he had forged amidst the solitude of the island. In hindsight, Alexander Selkirk's remarkable odyssey from marooned castaway to cultural icon underscores the resilience of the human spirit and the timeless allure of survival narratives to captivate and inspire across generations. His legacy endures as a testament to the enduring power of human endurance and the indomitable will to survive against all odds. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.